pleasure to address the Lions Club and update you on what's going on in the chamber. And uh, sometimes when I look out like the Lions Club and some the Rotary Club or whatever the case might be, I think I'm also addressing the chamber members too because it seems like our our folks are volunteering in multiple organizations and we really, really appreciate that because without our volunteers uh, within our community, it's very, very hard to get anything accomplished. And the Lions Club does a tremendous amount of very positive things. So I was asking Judy a while ago what the membership is in the Lions Club and it's about 50, I understand. And your participation level is very high too. So uh, we appreciate that. In the chamber area, uh, we have the, event, the annual uh, Christmas light parade coming up. And that's going to be this Saturday, starting at 6.30. Now, last year we had a Lions Club entry. I haven't seen one come in, so, but if you're interested in entering a Lions Club, uh, we still are taking the entries. But the parade begins at 6.30. The uh, judging uh, is 6 p.m. down at 8th and Main Street. Uh, this year's theme uh, is Hometown Christmas, and uh, we're looking forward to it. We right now have about 20 plus entries, I believe, so, uh, so we're, we're pleased with that. And uh, we've invited everyone, if you don't have any entry, just come out and have a good time and enjoy the, uh, the Christmas season. Uh, it's a great time. We also have our Christmas Bucks program. And we have a number of our merchants and sponsors that help support that. This year we're giving away $3,000. We gave away our first thousand dollars two weeks ago. And uh, then this afternoon will be our second drawing for a thousand dollars. And uh, these are all, all uh, Henrietta merchants who supports this. And including First National Bank, AEB, and First National Credit Union sponsors of it also. The uh, Henreddit.com and the Henreddit Freelance are co-sponsors. We really appreciate that very much. But our merchants are the ones that support our schools, volunteer in our organizations, and they're struggling, but they still step out there and help support programs. So when you're shopping this year, I know it's convenient to go to Amazon and go to other places. I know that going to Tulsa and other places to shop if we don't carry everything that you might need here. But I really uh, implore that you really give these handwritten merchants a chance. If they have time, many times they can order what you need. And the neat thing about that is that you have a local relationship. Uh, here a while back, uh, I went in to get some new glasses. And uh, I had time, so I didn't need them immediately. So uh, I like the service that I get down to Henry Red Eye Center. And uh, when you go in there for an eye exam or for assistance, you don't only get a quality eye exam, you not only get great assistance, you get a visit. You feel very, very comfortable. They go beyond what needs to occur. Uh, you're just another person when you go to Tulsa and other areas. And I find that very, very true in many of our businesses. You go to Ron McAfee. Ron McAfee's been in business here since Methuselah was in diapers, I think. <laughs> but when you go to Ron to get a service, you get a visit, you get a history lesson many times, <laughs> and you receive a quality product. And I can say that, that so confidently in almost all of our businesses. So let's give them a chance because they're struggling. They, this, all these online purchases and the, uh, the non uh, brick and mortars are really challenging these businesses. And before I get too involved in that, I want to mention another event that we have coming up. And that's our annual bank. It's January 13th. It's going to be on a Saturday this time instead of the traditional Monday. We thought we'd try that to allow people to have more time not worry so much about the babysitters and getting up for school and whatever the case might be the next day for the children or getting up for work. Um, so the theme is going to be a luau theme. It's going to be a Legends Luau. And we're actually going to have Kalu Pig, which is going to be a whole pig. Right. Uh, and we're going to have Polynesian Chicken and, and the other accompaniments with that. 
but uh, our price has increased a little bit. We're going to go to $25. We would have $20 for years, but based on our cost, it's going to have to go up to $25. But last year, we had 160 people show up for a banquet, and it's going to be at the Civic Center, and it'll, it'll start um, at 6 o'clock. So we're looking forward to that. Billy Bate is our entertainment coordinator. She's got a special program put together for, for that. And then we'll be recognizing uh, at the Henrietta of the Year uh, through the Henrietta Freelance. That's their program. But they always use the uh, Chamber Banquet to do that. So if you have nominations for Henrietta of the Year, mm -hmm. the Henrietta Freelance is taking those nominations. And the neat thing about this year, and even last year, uh, there's a number of nominees out there. There's a number of great people doing things. And so, uh, we encourage you to get your Henrietta of the Year nominations in. And the Chamber also recognizes certain people or organizations. We've recognized the Lions Club in the past for what they've done. In fact, we had the Lions Club as our, our Grand Marshal when you get to pray. So, uh, we, we appreciate what you do. But going back to the Henrietta merchants and uh, our community, many people do not realize that Oklahoma is about the only state in the Union that requires its cities by constitution to exist on sales tax revenue and their utility. Every penny that you pay Oh, is that? Uh, <laughs> it's little. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad she's enjoying things. Yeah. That's the tax code. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, she knows what's coming up in the future, probably. <laughs> but the, the point of it is, is that other cities, other states, they get a portion of uh, the ad valorem tax. So property taxes contribute to their tax base. Cities in Oklahoma don't have access to that. So when you pay property tax on your home, on your business, it doesn't come to the city of Henrietta. It goes to the county and goes to the state. When this was originally set up, the concept was the cities would get the sales tax revenue and the city and state would, would, would receive property tax revenue and, and other sources of income to, to make their system work. Well, they also began to tap into sales tax revenue. So Henrietta is our 4% sales tax revenue, which is competitive with any, anyone on the uh, I-40 corridor. However, we're almost at 10% total because of the sales tax revenue collected by the county and the state. So when you sometimes ask maybe why a city in Oklahoma because it's systemic throughout our, 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 our state, uh, doesn't do A, B, C, or D. It's a revenue-based problem. It's a constitutional-based problem. And uh, hopefully in the future we may see some changes to that, but it, it, it drives revenue. Now, is there things that can, can change? Well, uh, I'm glad to say finally the city of Henrietta uh, passed a motel tax here a while back. The chamber had been encouraging that for several years. That's, that's a, a really great amount of money that comes in to devote to tourism, parks, recreation, and other resources. But uh, So that's creating another revenue stream. Some new businesses are coming in that will create a, a, an improved revenue stream. Shoney's. The uh, Quick Trip project is, is still out there. It hasn't developed fully yet, but it's still out there. It's slowly crawling along. And once the issue is resolved, hopefully it'll, it'll, it'll mature and occur. But we have other businesses that are interested in Henrietta. But sales tax revenue is essential. And what's happening is because we have so many people buying online, and, and, and it, it's beginning to siphon off a lot of money. But that directly impacts your city. Directly impacts your city. Now, the Chamber of Commerce does not receive any sales tax revenue uh, from the city or, or anything. We're, we're based upon our membership and any events that we put on. So, so as, as our members pay their dues, that's what we exist on. And so that's important to keep that separation. 
But it's very important to understand when you see a city struggling, there's reasons. Now, Main Street, uh, we've been trying to stimulate interest in revitalization of Main Street. And uh, we, we didn't just start this. It's been a while. Uh, <clears throat> that's a very, very difficult place to happen. Uh, and the reason for that is our main street's a little bit different than some main streets. It doesn't have a square, and uh, the, the layout's different. We have a four-lane road, a four-lane highway, and the highway is developed for speed, not for merchant convenience. So we don't have angled parking, which actually would not work for us right now, but, it, but the four-lane road is designed for speed, to pass our merchants, actually. So there was a lot of I think lack of forethought a number of years ago, and I'm not criticizing uh, city management or, or council or anyone else. It's just sometimes we don't have a, we can't visualize what's going to go on with some of the decisions we make. So some of the things, and you'll pardon me if I'm rambling, if I ramble just a little bit, but I've got some things to kind of explain to many people that don't understand why Henrietta might be in the case that we're in. Again, one financial. The other is, let's take Interstate 40, uh, the Indian Nation Turnpike. Bird's eye view, great location for anyone that looks at it. What happened when I-40 came through? When I-40 came through, which originally was being planned over the Wetumpka area, and we lobbied to get that I-40 located here. The problem of it is, is we've got a lot of traffic flow but it passes Henrietta. The thought process was that we'd have exits so they could come into Henrietta and do their shopping. What happened and was missed, it was missed in Kima, it was missed in Henrietta, taken advantage of in Shawnee. Access roads, adjacent access roads, acquiring that property at the same time they acquired the property for the I-40 to provide access roads for retail development. Didn't happen. Very, very difficult to do that. Along comes the Indian Nation Turnpike. Same thing occurs, plus it cuts a huge park right half in two. No ingress and egress onto our parks. Did not occur. So now we've got uh, nearly 600 acres, give or take, that's been basically sectioned off by an, an, an Indonesian turnpike. No one negotiated ingress and egress. You don't think about that too much, but that occurred. That affects how your parks can develop. So now the cost of doing these things are enormous. We look at floodplain. You cross the, uh, the uh, railroad tracks, you automatically pretty much go into the floodplain for all that property on through there. That's a development issue. As you look at the beautiful hills that we have around us, because we're known as the City of Seven Hills. They're beautiful. They're also an encumberment. So as you look at, uh, I worked for the military for over 40 years. And one of the first things we do from a military perspective, when we get ready to take on a battle or take on an action, we look at what we call an encumberment map. What prevents us from doing certain things? How do we adjust? But once we know what they are, then we begin to deal with them. Henrietta was an industrial town for years and years and years. Developed a great middle class base. And you see that development in planning. And uh, you see it with like there's 11, maybe 11, 11 parks here in Henrietta. 11 parks dispersed around the community. And then we have this great uh, Nichols Park, which is actually designed to be a regional park. A lot of folks don't know that. And you can see the planning of, of, of how that occurred and the beautiful, the, the beautiful location that, that it was and the, the architecture that's out there and everything. But then you see a decline. There was a period of time where Nichols Park was just ignored. And that, the, the deferred maintenance is costly. But now we're beginning to rebuild in that area. When I first got here, what got me involved in Henrietta as, as a young kid, I used to come over here and swim and enjoy Nichols Park because I had family in the area. 
Uh, when I retired, I bought a, uh, some property over uh, in Olfusky County. But uh, my wife came over to Nichols Park and she gave me a call. I was still in California at the time and she said, I don't know who manages this place, but it's a dump. She said, it's an embarrassment. And I can't believe that. So when I came back, I drove out to Nichols Park. There was, an old, there was dogs tied to the caretaker's, caretaker's house on chains. The, uh, the bathhouse was deplorable. There was no swimming. Picnic tables were just torn up and laying there. It had no maintenance. The pier didn't have any. So I thought maybe I can get involved here and help them out. So the neat thing about it, at that time, there was a plan called the King Cole Camp Plan. The city had bought into it. In fact, the mayor, Mayor Lonnie, who was the mayor, signed it. And that was to develop a, uh, the east side of the park with access roads coming off of the pipe, uh, the Indonesian Turnpike, to develop a, uh, a museum and retail operations on that side. Uh, it was brought into by Congress, brought into by the State Department of uh, Transportation, and the Chamber was working with that. Uh, the Chamber paid for the nomination package with the Embargo the Register of Historic Places to raise the money for that. And there was there was grants written to improve uh, the, the park as a whole, to include the bathhouse and other areas. And uh, so that was developing. We were part of that. The chamber was very actively involved in it. The city was behind it. Multiple meetings occurred. Yeah. Then a red flag got run up. The red flag said you can't do retail development on the property east of, of the turnpike. No one asked, wait a minute, how can you do it? So it got shut down. Captain Sheridan, uh, the former, uh, the wife of the former uh, Senator uh, Sheridan, uh, then took an alternate route and got land over here uh, east of Trujillo at the top of the hill to build a museum. She went forward on that and when it got down to, to completing that museum project, uh, the city saw a flaw in it and didn't approve it. So consequently that didn't go forward. Now, some people may say who wants to go to a mining museum? Some people do. Maybe a lot of people do. But it pulls traffic over by 40 and 75. New traffic into your community. And it's a multiple of four to every dollar spent. New traffic in your community that spends overnight can be a multiple of eight. That's a new dollar. So things that we do to bring people to Henrietta, whether it be events, whether it be a mining museum, whatever it might be, brings people in off the I-40. You'll see we don't have the access roads to generate that revenue. So those are many changes that uh, I would say missed opportunities. Henrietta, like many communities, are, is, a, is a town of missed opportunities. And a lot of that is based upon vision. So consequently, the, the chamber, uh, we looked at Main Street, said, well, what can we do on Main Street? Well, many communities have a program uh, that you may be familiar with. It's called the Main Street Program. Main Street Program's focus is on Main Street and the cultural value of those assets that are on Main Street and also to put on events. To have a Main Street Program, first of all, it must be an official Main Street Program sanctioned by the Department of Commerce. And then you're required to have, I believe right now it's probably $45,000, $50,000 your guarantee for your, your Main Street manager. So it requires multiple things and a financial investment. It also requires membership, which begins to duplicate the membership of the chamber. So I went to the training for the Main Street program when one of our directors accompanied me because we were looking at it. So we felt that we would come back and try to do some re, uh, re, uh, revitalization of Main Street through developing our own quasi-Main Street program because we felt we needed to give one that we organized here without any um, formal uh, recognition by the, by the uh, uh, 
Department of Commerce and see how it was going to work before we move forward on anything formal because there's a major cost to it. Main Street programs also are normally, and chambers are normally also partially funded from the city government through park and recreation tourism dollars, through the motel tax and such as that. I believe the Main Street program at, at Omogi receives or has received annually about 40000 a year, the chamber equal to that. And again, we receive, we, we don't receive that. However, our, our, our city has, uh, doesn't have the finances that, that we would like to see. And I want to mention one other thing. When I first got here, when these other things were being developed, the King, uh, King Cove project and such as that, the city was in the red. They were laying off employees. They were trying to figure out how to pay their bills. So that was a driver not to invest more money and more obligations. Uh, Mayor Ronnie went through that. They were they were strapped. So consequently, that has changed. That culture has changed. They passed the hotel tax. They've got those things coming in. So we, we developed a program and decided we would try to stimulate interest in revitalization. Revitalization key on Main Street uh, is really with the owners of the properties on Main Street with assistance from the city and the chamber and others. We look at our buildings and we look at our buildings, we do an assessment of the buildings and many of our buildings really are not in Hamburg when you look at the roofs and other issues. So there's an incumbent, okay? So we tried the program and it just simply couldn't get off the ground. So we let it sit for a while and then we tried it again. Now, Jason, that kind of, kind of goes back to your hometown that's been revitalized. So the chamber, we don't stop, we just back off for a while. See, we stimulate things. We're, we try to motivate things, but we can't fund a lot of these things. We're not a regulatory agency. So consequently, we backed off and then we started another Main Street attempt. I uh, couldn't quite get the interest. Without the interest of the Main Street property owners, it's hard to do. So we backed off again, and in comes another new city manager, Ted Graham. And I met with Ted, and I said, Ted, I think our Main Street needs to be revitalized. We need to come up with a joint agreement, a joint plan of some sort, try to stimulate some interest to, to see if we can get something done. So he and I jointly wrote a program for revitalization of Main Street. Uh, uh, Ted, uh, uh, Ted uh, went ahead and, uh, and left, the city, left the city manager, and I went ahead and finished the proposal, provided it to the city for review. And then they provided it to their city attorney, and the city attorney sent it to the municipal league attorney. And by the time they got back, they felt there was maybe some possible uh, legal risk with the recommendations in it. It also required the city, through their uh, through their uh, code enforcement program, to oversee the uh, re uh, revitalization. Uh, I talked to Hedda, and the city manager of uh, Ted Graham, but also talked to Hedda. Head of the Economic Development Authority approved twenty thousand approved twenty thousand dollars per year uh, for city uh, for businesses to do front street renovations and there's requirements on that and everything. But the thought was, if we could guarantee uh, twenty thousand dollars per year, up to five thousand dollars per business, that it'd be easier for you to go to AEB and go to the First National Bank and say I'm going to guarantee if I do what I say I'm going to do, a five thousand dollars at a minimum. Uh, or at the maximum uh, on my on my renovation project, can you help me on the loan? It makes it easier to get that loan. So that's still out there. It's just not implemented yet because the city probably needs to get uh, either additional staff or whatever, ever how they feel they need to approach it. But anyway, that's that's where that's at. That kind of helps give you some feedback, Jason. Too. Yeah. So what we're looking at is we do need to uh, to really revitalize Main Street, but there's multiple roles that need to be played. When you go into Rich Barbershop, you go back in time. That's an excellent. Or mostly. <laughs> How old is Rich Barbershop? Um, Fifty-seven years old now. Don't it need to go back further than that? Well, it went back to White's. The um, it was a jewelry store before, mm -hmm. but um, but it's been there fifty some odd years. The original owner of what's in the Rich Barber Shop was a president of the Chamber of Commerce, 
and uh, was the one that a lot of people don't know created another park over here south uh, north of town and uh, they didn't discover they really had that park active over there or that park property until they went to look at, at the a accessing the new fire department a lot of stuff you get missed when you have changeover of management in a city we can't keep city manager when you have changeover of management in the city a lot of the corporate knowledge goes away even though you got a city council they're not intricately involved in the day-to-day -day operations interesting thing so henry becomes like many communities missed opportunities does that mean that we've got to fold up our, our stores and our, our businesses and go on no it just means we've got a challenge out there and we need to face it and our chamber continues to be a cheerleader for Henrietta. Why? We have a great foundation of businesses. We have a great foundation of people that make those businesses. We believe in that. We believe in our membership. And it's just a tremendous place to live. And it is a great location. We've always got to ask ourselves, great location for what? And we've come up with a what. Define that very well. And then build that into our plan. Henrietta can be extremely successful because it has been in the past. We've got to build the middle class, folks. We've got to do something that builds the middle class here. It won't be industry right away. And Henrietta hung its hat on industry for years. When the industry left, evidently no one listened to what Ross Perot said years ago, the giant sucking sound going to Mexico and other places. Industry left and wasn't coming back for a long time. Hopefully, uh, through changes that's occurring now with the new administration, we may see some industry coming back, but it's going to go to Oklahoma City and Tulsa. We have a challenge that we did not have before in all communities here in Oklahoma and throughout our nation, and that's drugs. Finding an employee that can even pass a drug test is hard to do. The military is even considering taking people that had formal drug charges on as part of the military, something we can hear of. Getting someone that knows how to show up for work. Some of my members tell me, if, I don't care if they know the job or not. If they're willing to be clean, show up for work, pass a drug test, I'll train them. That's more important to me than knowing the job. I can train them. When we opened up Taco Bueno, was the concern, was the concern customer base? Was the concern this, this, or that? The concern was, do I get enough employees? that can represent me properly. When we opened up Shoney's, concern, can I get enough employees that can, that can represent me and stay here? Do you know how many employees we might go through? <laughs> so we got challenges, but we can deal with them. But uh, one of the things we really have to deal with is the heart of our community, the soul of our community, and I believe it starts on Main Street, that image. So, do you folks have any questions or any thoughts or anything? You and I are getting a new neighbor. Yes, we are. Uh, Bob's Clothing is going out of business. I didn't know, we all know, but now the antique mall is coming in there. Um, Lisa Thomas, is it Thomas? Lisa Thomas. She, yeah. she had a Second Street Antique Mall. Uh, she runs a quality antique program. And she has one in Shakota right now. And when she put, I'm, I would be really surprised when uh, Lisa puts in uh, this new store if it wasn't top quality. I've seen what she's done in other areas and top quality antiques, well managed, well organized, well displayed. It's not a junk store. Very, very, uh, very, very good. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm anxious about that. The Imperial Music also, uh, the owner passed away, Jim Parsley, and uh, uh, his family that one in the probate, and that's going to be sold. But that, that building's been maintained well, so I'm sure it'll fill up. So what we see as one business goes out, one comes in. Newt's, Newt's time been here for years. Um, uh, in fact, it's a really fun. It's a small world. I think Jim, Jim was in the Marine Corps and on our rodeo team, and uh, uh, but he's he's sold out now and, and everything. But we have a new company coming come in. It's called One Tire. It's out of Shakota, and they're remodeling, putting all brand new equipment in. We see Henley Motors, uh, they're expanding. They're, they're putting in more bays. So when people say Henry is dying, it's not dying, it's just changing. But we need to build the, the, the middle class here. 
Pam, Pam Maple said that at the parade on Saturday that Channel 6 News is going to be here with their Storm Chaser and Station Night's going to be here. So that, that's another fun opportunity. Um, and I, I think it's, it's really fun to highlight the, uh, the cruise nights that are just so uh, growing and growing. It, it's well, amazing. That's the amazing. reason how we put on these events is to attract people to our community. Oh, yeah. Once we get them here, we have to be prepared to display our community. And that's where I'm coming from. We can create events. Henry Edda's location is a prime location for major events. People are prepared. Major events. People are prepared. And I think that's probably one of the answers to, to, to Henrietta. But uh, our cruise nights, we thought we'd try one of those here a few years back. Then it went over so, so great. So then we decided to have a, uh, a, a fall one. So now we've got a spring and fall cruise night, and that brings in hundreds of people from outside of town. Our Christmas parade uh, uh, brings a number of people in. Our rodeos bring people in. The off-road track activities bringing people in. So I think Henry's on the right track. We just have to look and see what's our next step on things. Personally, I'm super excited that OK Bounce opened a brick and mortar to do parties, and I think they're going to be doing open bounces on Sunday. So okay. having a young child, I'm super excited about that. <laughs> we've got a lot but of, I don't want to go to McDonald's or Tulsa because that's where I would go before. We've got a lot of really positive comments on OK Bounce. They're a brand new chamber member. OK Bounce. Uh, uh, they've invested a lot in that place and it's quality and that's what I like it's interior exterior um, and uh, the actually when it the setting adjacent to the uh, building center they complement each other uh -huh. and uh, and I'm steadily seeing some some improvements down at, at the building center too but when you got if you drive by it in the evenings and you 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 know, you go over here to to McIntosh Tumbley uh, and now we've got the, the OK Bounce, and now we've got uh, other activities. Main Street in the evenings, if you'll notice, there's a lot of parked cars. A lot of closed businesses, but a lot of parked cars. Uh, and uh, it's uh, but very interesting. So we know the draw can be there. And when people say there's nothing for you, well, we got a splash pad now. That was a major. These are major investments, actually. We've got OK Bounce. We've, that's private private investment, which we love to see that. And uh, so there's a, a number of things that are positive. So when I talk to you about missed opportunities and I talk to you about facts, I'm not criticizing Henrietta. I'm just giving you some history. But when we look at where we're going, I think we've got really good leadership in our, in our city council. We've got good leadership in our city. Um, we just need to continue to move forward. We need to help each other, work together. Because we, I think we have the great people to do that. And you see that every day in what people do. But uh, things are getting better, and we, I think we really need to think positive about our community. Brag on it. And uh, hopefully we, we deliver what we brag on. <laughs> right. Thank you. All right, well, thank you very much. Um, and is there anything else we need to announce or discuss before we go ahead and close out? No? All right. Y'all have a good day.